Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. Well guys, we got a lot of ground to cover here today. So let's just jump right into it, alright? Okay, so what I've got here is an SJ Cam that has the ability to do night sky time-lapse photography. Uh, it's pretty amazing considering that this cam uh, usually sells for around $100 and it also has the features that most of these action cams have uh, and then some. Um, it does come with uh, the waterproof case. It comes with a bunch of accessories. There are lots of reviews on this side of the SJ Cam M20 that are, that's out there. The main reason why I put this uh, little workshop here together is I've seen a lot of different videos on unboxing and comparing this particular feature to that other camera, but I didn't see anyone getting into uh, actually maximizing the potential of this cam uh, when I read the specs that the ISO setting can be set as high as 1600 and the uh, shutter speed 30 seconds and then raw on top of that I figured whoa okay well that seems to have at least technically the credentials to create a night sky time lapse so and I think this video here kind of uh, demonstrates that but you need to know how to work the data and you need to be able to use raw and so let's get into that and let's take a look at these videos a little bit more okay so now here we're looking at a time lapse that was created at a relatively dark site probably about a category three you can see the Milky Way here and there's some clouds cover it wasn't a perfectly clear night but it was pretty good and clouds were coming uh, in in the early part of the evening as you can observe here with through this time lapse this is just looping so that you can get a feel for it and now I've got this little guy here we've got Orion the constellation Orion in the background and a few other constellations Taurus and um, we have the Pleiades the seven sisters quite a bit of sky here and I took this little guy here he's a warrior guy I figured he'd work with that uh, Orion as you know as the hunter so um, that's the choice and the way I got this lit if you're interested is that I've lit it in the front with a very soft red light it's an accumulative thing and it adds up even though it was very very dim and on the back uh, below the rock I've got a very dim white light to shine on his back and that's how I'm getting that glow on the side there. Now here's the same image pulled out of the time-lapse stack that was photographed in JPEG and the only stars that are visible are the brighter stars in the belt of Orion and the Milky Way is not visible at all you cannot detect it in this image as you can in the raw image okay so here we have a JPEG image pulled out of the time-lapse stack of the constellation Orion that I shot in my backyard under light polluted skies now when you set up the SJ Cam M20 for RAW it creates a JPEG and so I've pulled that JPEG out and if you look at the JPEG you could see that it's pretty noisy in addition to the colors are kind of like off register uh, also the stars that you see are the brighter ones and the fainter ones are hidden in the black so we'll move over now to the raw and here's the raw image and it's 30 second ISO 1600 exposure value compensation one third and both of them were shot in the same way because they are accompanying each other when you create this raw file and you can see that the raw image is less noisy the colors are more true and we're getting fainter stars around the constellation Orion and in the outer field um, when you see these time lapses created with these action cams um, online um, they're usually only showing the brighter stars because they're typically shot in JPEG so having raw capability here is going to make a big difference for us so let's move on to setting up for a time lapse of the night sky okay so we've got it turned on and to set it up we're going to get into the time-lapse mode it's right there um, if you need to learn how to navigate through the menu there are lots of videos uh, for this 
Here we are with the photo lapse time. This is how much time you want between exposures. Um, I've got it for 20 seconds. So we hit this. That's good. Come down to the image size. And I've got it to the largest, which is 16 megabytes. And the quality, of course. And then quality will be fine. Sharpness, we're going to leave that as normal. The white balance, we're going to put daylight. Now, I know this is at night, but if you put the daylight, then it will calibrate the star color and the Milky Way correctly. Uh, so put it at daylight. Don't put it at auto. Color, of course, will be normal. And ISO, we want to push that puppy up all the way to 1600. So that's all the way on the bottom. And it's already set there. Now this is an important feature that this M20 has, um, and that is the exposure value compensation. Uh, typically it's set at zero, but because we're going to be doing night photography, we want to increase that. What that does, it allows more light to come into the sensor. Here we are at zero, and we're going to bump it up to one-third. Now, if you find that your images are still not getting enough light coming into them, then you can go back and increase that to two-thirds and so on and so on until you find the right balance. But the sample I showed you of the backyard test I did here in town with the Constellation Orion and the clouds moving by, that was set to one-third. So that seemed to work pretty good. I might have to bump that up uh, for a darker site, but for here that worked pretty good. And again, this is a great, great feature. And if you're going to do astrophotography, you need to take advantage of the uh, different features that this little cam has. And here is the most important feature of them all for nighttime astrophotography, and that is RAW. RAW is the full enchilada, the whole taco, so that you have all the data you need so that when you bring it into Lightroom or Photoshop, you can stretch that histogram, uh, adjust the highlights, adjust the dark, adjust the whites, gives you everything. When you shoot JPEG, it's like eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that an elephant has sat on. And what happens is it gets so compressed uh, that there's nothing there for you to tantalize or tickle out. And uh, nighttime photography requires um, a raw image. If you are serious about doing nighttime photography, you need to work with raw. It's just part of the toolbox that you're going to need to get the job done. So this camera with raw and ISO of 1600 is just amazing and it does a 30 second exposure as well and we're going to get into that here in a minute. So now the gyro setting will be off because it's going to be on a tripod and the field of view is going to be your choice. Um, I have this one set at wide and the distortion correction will not work with the raw images because they are uncompressed, untouched by the camera. However, you do get a JPEG image that accompanies this raw image and if you want to have those corrected then I would turn that on and we can turn that on although I throw those JPEGs out so I keep it off because I don't use the JPEGs so now we'll go down and the time step of course we want to make sure that that is off we don't want those on our images so now that we've done that we'll press the button on the left to get out of that mode and now we're going to go back into the here and get up to the photo, video photo. Now you could do this first before you go to the time lapse. Um, we're just kind of doing it a little backwards. So we're going to go into that and now we're move over to video. So now we're at straight photo. Now with the straight photo, what we're going to do there, uh, it should be the same. Everything is going to be the same. Uh, that we set up in the time lapse because it maintains that as you can see it's the 16 megs but what we want to do here in the photo because you can't do this in the time lapse menu you have to go to the photo video menu is the exposure time 
and I've already got it set to 30 seconds which is just great that we have this capability in this little cam so there it is at 30 seconds and of course you would just scroll up or down to decide which one you want 30 seconds is good that's real good so we're gonna select that and the delay capture we don't want to do that the quality is fine of course and we go down and sharpness we're going to leave that as normal and the white balance should be daylight there it is because we set that up in the time lapse and color should be normal and the ISO should be 1600 see those values maintain over to the other side here again exposure value compensation is plus one third and you might if you're finding like I said uh, where you're not getting Milky Way details then I would bump that up to the next increment and then of course it should say raw on and the gyro is going to be off field of view should be wide go down and the distortion correction is off because it's only going to apply to the JPEGs and we're gonna throw those JPEGs out um, they're they're useless for nighttime photography now we need to go over to the time lapse we need to set that up photo lapse so there we go so we are in there and we call that good and now it comes on and you if you notice you'll see a little clock right about there I don't know if you could see that there's a little clock right there in the corner that is what will let you know that it's there and up here it says 16 megabytes and here's the battery now if you're going to do a time lapse that's like an hour an hour and a half the great thing about this cam too is that you can plug in an external uh, battery uh, source the kind that you use to charge up your cell phone on the go and ha what ha what have you and you can plug that in right here next to the USB card and it will put power into that battery so that the battery won't die if you're going to do a two hour or more exposure absolutely fantastic once you create all your files you have to open it up in this program now this program uh, I've got a link on where you can download it is really really sweet um, creds to the guys who put this together boy they've done the community a, a big large on this one um, with this program it will convert it to a TIFF file or a DING file a DNG file and Photoshop could read either one of those files and it maintains uh, the uh, data intact either one of those files will work in in Lightroom and Photoshop and I've noticed that one of the difficulties people were having was was converting these raw files um, to uh, files that could be recognized by Photoshop or Lightroom or some other editing program well this little program is really simple to use you basically grab all your files and put it in a folder on your computer when you pull it off your uh, M20 cam and then you direct the program on where these files is and then you can create another folder somewhere on your hard drive or within that folder and say that that's the destination and you don't have to worry about sorting through the JPEG files because when you do this transfer there are JPEG accompanying JPEGs to the raw files that's just how the camera shoots it but you don't have to worry about that because this little gem of a program will just grab the raw files convert them to TIFF or DING and then put them over in your folder and there you are you're ready you're converted and you can just uh, put them in a timeline or put them in Lightroom and uh, tease out the fainter details and change histogram, change exposure, change uh, darks, change whites. Um, you, you can calibrate the camera. All of this is in Lightroom and that is because these are raw files. Raw rules when it comes to the night sky. If you have something that shoots raw, that's the way to go. If you really want to get those uh, night skies lit up with stars. All right, so if you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe and uh, thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Nights. Clear skies.